To Vegas! Go to Vegas! They say Vegas is a town where people get their dreams and also drug-resistant strains of herpes. Bad a girl. I'm drinking for two now. <laughs> I developed a food line called Anorexia. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to take that word back. There are two kinds of people in this world. Those who can throw a good party and those who will probably die alone. I don't know how I'm gonna die. I don't know how you're going to die. I just know that you will not have another person near you when it happens. I was hoping you were the first lady, but... I get that a lot. I wish you were somebody else. Ah! <laughs> but I'm not. I'm me. Damn! The new baby is way better at being nice than any of these broken ass bitches. I hear you. I know you hear me. Mm -hmm. But are you listening? Oh, yeah. Blood is thicker than water, so is soup and juice. No one ever thinks about the bearer of the bad news. What about us? I'm a wreck. I know I can tell your place is a mess. I hope that we can all get along this year. I hate your house. Look at me. I am living my dreams. You look so happy. Oh! This is so classy, right? Hey guys, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Absolutely, I love the show. It is so funny. It has some of my favorite funny people in it. Cameoing, cam, cam, cameoing, cameoing, whatever cameo you want. That's not? a new thing. We just came. We, who's going to cameoing today? <laughs> uh, there's one thing about it that I've always been curious about. There is you're 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 parodying to a degree the the Real Housewives. When did this? When did the show kind of become its own thing and no longer a parody? It's not really a direct parody. These are different characters, and you're sort of building them over the course of time. When did you start noticing that it wasn't really about the actual housewives show, housewife show anymore? I would say maybe kind of near the beginning. The creators wanted. I mean, the creators are huge fans of the Real Housewives, mm -hmm. so this is sort of their homage in a way but knew that after a while you can't just be making fun of them because that would get very old for an entire series. So they're like, we, we have to have our own characters and storylines and kind of get it going from there. You can also take it as far as you want, like even further than do. the actual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we do. You yeah. were even talking about in the green room the outfits that you guys have to wear every season. When you, what do you think when you look back, uh, when the season airs and you have to look back at those outfits? I want you guys to answer this question very carefully because as you know, I kept most of my clothes. Oh, so. well, and so by the way, also, feel? I just remembered last season, a lot of the clothes were from my own closet. <laughs> um, so that was disturbing. Yeah. Gross uh, and gross. <laughs> um, no, I, none of these clothes are mine. Um, and I didn't take any of them home. So let's be very clear about let's, that. Let's just be clear about that. I didn't take any of my skanky politician clothes home. Um, and that wig, I don't ever want to see again from the season. It was like so painful. I, like, I wonder now, are people in wigs angry? Because I was, I felt, it made me angry. Extremely painful. I will say that this season I play Ivanka and a blonde and I'm always in, my bra's always out and, and showing. You see her bra like every day I saw yeah, her bra. Always. And we did shoot in Vegas and I was walking through the casino and I did get propositioned for money. Yes, you got propositioned yes, as somebody, a prostitute. Yes, I was with her. I was a prostitute. Yeah, yeah okay, I was walking on. behind her. Let's yeah. just stop everything here. Take me back to the beginning of the proposition. What was said? What 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 uh, resort were you in? Walking through the casino. Mm -hmm. Not a great casino. Let's no, be honest. No, not a not a great. It casino. wasn't a high. It wasn't like I got propositioned at the win. <laughs> no. Um, better but, better or worse than the Hard Rock? Oh, way worse. worse. Way worse. Mm. No, I'm it was not like gonna the mention. saddest place I've ever I, been. Maybe. Let's just say I didn't, I've been to Vegas probably 30 times. I didn't know it existed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm walking through and I stopped, I think, to get like a coffee at the yeah. Starbucks or something inside. And the guy next to me was like, so, you know, you live in Vegas? And I was like, no. And I think quickly he realized I wasn't, but he just basically was like, oh, are you up for a good time? Kind of a thing. Whoa. And I was like, not really. I, I don't think I am. I mean, I don't know, how much, I don't know how much money we're talking. I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm assuming your good time is this, but we could be talking about something else. Exactly. Like, you yeah. It detail. was shut down very quickly. I it, was was walking, a, it was a shutdown. I was walking behind you, 
And I probably would have witnessed it, but I got distracted because there was a man dressed as Elvis playing the slots, and his dog was dressed as Elvis. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, can I take a picture of your dog? And he was like, no. And I was like, eh. And then, and then yeah. I walked up to you, and you were like, I think, I, I think someone just was going to pay me for sex. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dude, was he, uh, when you shut it down, was he angry? Did he, was he kind of like, oh, oh he was more embarrassed. Like he was I think embarrassed. he was oh, embarrassed. Good. Because good. I wasn't subtle. I was like, what? I, mean, I just was like, you're crazy. Like, but, I, I but didn't. you looked ridiculous, which is amazing. Yeah, you're I mean, like, I was like, seriously? This yeah. is your type? No. I, I was shut down very quickly. Well, that's yeah. what I mean. I wonder if he kind of was like, well, why are you, why don't get it? Like, what's the deal? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> He, he probably was confused. He probably I would was like, like to actually he interview was probably like, him. Anybody who looked dressed that way, how dare you tell me no? Yeah, he was like, you don't want me? Yeah. I'm doing yeah, you I get a favor. it if you're busy, but don't act like you're not a prostitute. <laughs> yeah, what is this? Yeah. Like, yeah. maybe I'm Talking not your so type. high and mighty. Yeah. 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 I see yeah. your bra, lady. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, what changes are your characters going through this season outside of being propositioned in real life? <laughs> Well, our care both all the characters on the show are new this season. It's sort of like except the American for, Horror except for Story, Timberlake. except yeah. for Fei Fei, Timberly's character. Um, my character, um, I'm vaguely European, which um, <laughs> my accent is. I just have a gift. I think I have an yeah. ear for accents. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Did you, did you work horrible. with a vocal coach on this yeah. one? Oh yeah, yeah. I went deep. I went deep into character. I can't wait to take her class on oh, accents. Yeah. It's no, it's gonna be amazing. It's terror. It, I am Russian. I'm Israeli. I'm German. I'm British. Like it's all over. I, then sometimes I sound deaf. No. Just I swear to God, and I didn't mean to. I just I'm improvising, and by the end of the sentence, we were like, "You sound like you don't hear well." <laughs> yeah. is, this, is this an apology before the show actually yes, airs? Like, yes. guys, I was trying <laughs> yes, to do an accent. Yes, May come across as Devin. I apologize and it was before not the premiere. Intended to be as such. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, and my character is the former first lady of the Vegas Strip, just a small part of the Strip. Um, that title is not recognized by the city of Las Vegas. Uh, it carries, like, no, no power at all. But I love it, and it's very important to me. Um, and I have a whole scene where I'm on the Vegas Strip, like, on a Friday at 5 o'clock in front of the Bellagio. Like, hundreds of people. And I'm, like, saying things like, I look like um, kind of like a sad middle-aged hooker slash politician is the look that I had. And I had to say things like, have a Vegas day today. Are you having a Vegas day? And the crazies that were in Vegas, like, were very vocal with me. Like, some people were like, we're having a real Vegas day. And, like, gross. And then, like, other people would be like, where's Dwight? Show me your boobs. Um, they're all kind no, the, this is Vegas. And then there'd be, like, someone with their four-year-old, <laughs> like, little kid. And you're like, would what? say the same thing. And, yeah. the, and the baby would be like, where's Dwight? Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest, Vegas is a horrible place. It is really, it's a perfect backdrop well, for this show, too. The first thing that happened when we got to Vegas, they asked us, did we want to upgrade our rooms? And having a good look at the lobby, I was like, yes, please. Because I'm scared to death of what will be up there. So we upgrade our rooms, we get upstairs to the room. Mm, upgrade, we should have gotten a definition of that word. Right. It it's was just, it was not better than what I'd imagined. It's and, just not having a dead hooker somewhere oh, in the room. It's just I, like a totally. We don't yeah. know that for sure. Yeah, we don't. I didn't know look that. in all the closets. And when I went into the first thing that happened was it was dark, so dark in the room. So I walked down to open the patio, and there is a homeless man with his dog covered in towels on my patio. <laughs> Welcome we to Las a, Vegas. We're at a great place. Welcome Let me to Las Vegas. Again, this was not a great hotel. Yeah. <laughs> I was my room was opened dog. up and I beautiful was like, dog. let's see what my view is. And it was a, a swimming pool that had um, caution tape. That's and it what was, I had. And um, like construction stuff, and it was mm -hmm. like clothes. It's just yeah, like clothes. Yeah, that's what my, it was like a very dangerous looking. Yeah, it had like just weird metal. pouches that hadn't been used for a while, just out yeah. in the air. Piled up rusted yeah. chairs. Yeah. This is the kind of hotel that would see this interview and be like, well, any press is good press. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> someone's going to want to come check this out. Like, maybe they're in the homeless men. They I don't do, know. They do have a lot of Elvis memorabilia. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. They have a lot of his outfits and glass containers. So there you go. They do. Mm -hmm. So were you guys shooting at this hotel as well as staying there? Or? Yes, we were. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just, oh I will say, just for two days. Yeah, we were there oh, for okay. the rest. We shoot in Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah. Off 
Oh, we shoot in oh. a very sad neighborhood in like Santa Clarita that's like all these big houses and then someone ran out of money and the whole neighborhood is just vacant. You can not like, get a break on where you guys shoot. No. <laughs> An Honestly, empty mansion. <laughs> we, I mean, we would travel two hours to get to the biggest shithole you've ever seen. Like, <laughs> it was like, can't we find a closer shithole? No, I know. I know. Are we surrounded by shitholes? Do I we know. have to travel? <laughs> yeah. Did it ever get to you when you're on set and you're improvising and you're trying to do comedy that you, like, you know, you had to travel two hours, maybe it's a bit of a shithole, or do you guys, no. you're just troopers the whole time and having fun? It no. honestly, like, we love, I mean, we really genuinely enjoy each other, and it was so fun to be with such a great group of funny women. They're, they're just smart and funny, yeah. and every day they were cracking, we were cracking each other up. Yeah. I mean, I break more than these two, yeah. or maybe more than anyone. I'm horrible. More than anyone. <laughs> Are you a big breaker? I, I guess so. I don't know. Maybe it was like years of the office where I couldn't laugh ever, that I got on this set, and I'm just like, <laughs> like was I it like, can't stop laughing. Was it like that at the office? We had Ed Helms here like a few weeks ago, and he was talking. I asked, who broke the most? He goes, no one broke. Like, oh. he was very, like, he wouldn't talk about it. Oh, my God. No, Mindy broke a lot. And Mindy would, like, cover her. When she would start laughing, she'd do this. <laughs> and I'm like, you're not fooling anyone. <laughs> your hand is over your face. Um, and, no, we all, but for the most part, like, Steve never broke. Oscar never broke. They were, like, so stoic. And I would just be, like, biting the inside of my mouth or something. But I guess around you guys, I was just like, screw it. <laughs> I'm just going to laugh. I'm in season one, and when you watch the reunion of season uh -huh. one, at one point they show a close-up on Angela when she's talking about having restless leg syndrome, and she's literally like, I have restless leg syndrome. She cannot get the words out. Her face is beat red. The tears are streaming down her yeah. face. And we only had like, you know, two, two shots of each one. So, so if you takes. laughed, I it's felt in so there. Bad. I felt yeah. so bad. But I, I do, you know how Oprah talked about her ugly cry? I do ugly laugh. Like if something's really funny, I shake, I make no noise and I cry. It's so attractive. And it's so, one of the craziest things I've ever seen. It's just you look over and you're like, are you okay? And she's like, just tears pouring. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. It's not, it's not one of my best moments it's at all. It's not great. It's not great. It's but I'm really tickled, so. <laughs> one, of the, one of the big things that the, the characters do in this show is, I mean, like the Real Housewives, there's always wine throwing in the face, there's always slapping, and there's always fighting. And I feel like one of the rules of doing a scene is like, you know, the end of the scene is when the fight happens. Like, you have to build up to that. But you guys are fighting all the time, yeah. and it's not really the end of the scene. Do you guys ever come up with fighting during improvising, or is that always sort of written out that, like, this is where the fight will happen? I think the fights are kind of structured because, I yeah. mean, you know, if, if in a scene, like, Andrea and I had a scene where we slap each other, like, we might improvise lines leading up to it, but we know at the moment the slap's going to happen. And I think I, I hadn't really, I hadn't slapped anyone. I slapped Rain one time pretty hard. But, but that was off camera. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that was in my dressing room. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, but, uh, but I hadn't, I've never slapped a woman and then when we hit each other, I guess if we didn't really sell it. Like, we were just so timid. We were like, eh. And then they were like, no, you, you kind of got to do it. And then we did. We slapped the shit out of each other. <laughs> and that reaction is so real because I remember being like, ow. Ow, that really hurt. But I was really mad at you. You were really, so well, because we hate each other. So. <laughs> there was actually a crazy situation. There's a scene later in the season where um, Aaron Hayes' character and I are in a boxing ring. Oh, and yeah. um, we're supposed to be boxing to figure out how to be friends. I don't know. It's like one of those weird things on The Housewives where they have all, they're always like, let's all be, let's all go to some event and let's all pretend we're chefs. You know, they always have it's those like weird. like the road rules challenge of uh, The Housewives or but something. Like they do it as parties. They're always having a themed party. So yeah. this was boxing. Let's get drunk and talk about our feelings with gloves. It's like, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so my character was supposed to be like, I don't have to stand, but I was standing in here doing this. I don't want to do this. And that's the again, accent. A gift. I know. Take her class. It's a gift. Take her class. Wait, I'm sorry. Did you? Can you not hear? Like, what happened there? It sounds <laughs> like you couldn't hear. Uh, no, I heard, and I heard it was pretty great. Um, no. So uh, Aaron and I are in there, and my character's supposed to be like da 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 da, and I'm supposed to turn, and she's supposed to punch me in the face. But we had a stunt coordinator, you know, and we had those. We had our gloves on, and we had the head things. Well, what the stunt coordinator doesn't tell us is that I should turn with my head down and that she should aim up here. So I have my gloves down, I turn, and she punches me legit in the face. Like, it, and like you it hear made it. a real sound. Like it I went like, like, oh. And I went down and finished the take, 
And she then is on top of me, supposedly attacking me. And she's like, I think I really hit you. I think I really hit you. And I'm like, you did. It really hurts. It's hurting. It's really hurting. And, and they actually had to send me home because I started getting a black eye. Oh my God. And it was crazy. But I do have confirmation they did use that take. Because I was like, if you don't fucking use that take, I will kill you. But I tr I've never been punched. I mean, I was punched in the face. Yeah. It was crazy. I came home, my husband was like, why are you home so early? I was like, I got punched in the face. <laughs> he was like, what are you talking about? I know. There, yeah. there are so many moments when we leave set at the end of the day, and like, you go home, and it's like, what did you do today, mommy? And like, I wrestled with a pregnant lady while she was trying to strip at her baby shower. <laughs> like, That's a real scene. That's a real scene that happened. I got in a wrestling match with Casey Wilson, yeah. who was very pregnant. And, it, I mean, th that's kind of the fun of doing a show like this, is you really get to be silly and just, we don't take it seriously and we just have a good time. Yeah. And you're acting, imagine what the actual Real Housewives are saying when, I guess they're doing it at home, not really going home after work, right? Aren't they shooting in their homes? Do they own those homes? Because I know some of those women are broke. I mean, bankrupt like They're a least. mag. They don't have anything left. <laughs> some of them. I, those, some of those have got to be staged homes because a lot of them went broke. I think, a, I think a lot of them are just rented and probably the production's paying yeah. for them. I don't think they're all real homes by any oh, means. Oh, no, I went on a hike one day with a friend in L.A., and she was like, that's where the Kardashians live. And I was like, no way. And there's like a sculpture and a... Bleh. And... And then someone, a total stranger behind us was like, totally, they don't live there. They totally don't live there. It's rented. Like, there was a whole thing on this hike with strangers. I was like, really? And I don't know. I think maybe that's, some of it is fake. Like right. that. They, rent, yeah. they rent the homes for production in the way that you would shoot a movie. or yeah. Like we like did. That. I think they go out to Santa Clarita, to these neighborhoods yeah. that no one you can afford to You think the Kardashians are going two hours out to Santa Clarita? They live in Calabasas. Yeah, that's true. They're used to that's a drive. True. They live in Calabasas. That's not close to anything. I, I don't know how they you do know where driving. they live. <laughs> Doesn't everyone on earth know that they live in Calabasas? Don't they like say I, it every time they open their mouth? You guys all know that they live in Calabasas? They live on earth. They know stuff. <laughs> I will tell you, my mom used to live in Calabasas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she would see them around sometimes, especially when they first got started. And she was like, I saw that Kim Kardashian. I have never seen a tush like that in my life. Like, she was just like, it's captivating. A tush. It's, it's, uh, By the way, I have her. seen it a couple times in real life. It's captivating. By the way, I, I did a movie where they gave me a prosthetic butt, so I had a bigger butt, and I loved it. I walked through set, and I was like, oh, mm, look at my butt. I did. I really did. Um, Wait, what movie was that? Struck by Lightning. <laughs> and uh, the director thought it'd be funny if I, I was a high school guidance counselor and he thought it'd be funny if I had a big butt. Um, so they, but it was like, I was like, what am I doing to my child? Because I was working on the office at the same time. So I'd go to set and I was fake pregnant that season. So I'd put on the belly and she'd be like, she'd hit the belly and then <laughs> I'd put on the butt. And she'd be like, mom. So anyway, she's going to be perfectly normal. <laughs> You, you were talking about uh, breaking on set and how you break the most. Andrea, you, uh, you're, I mean, you did uh, Step Brothers, and one of my favorite things in the world is the Step Brothers gag reel. Like, it's something that I watch on YouTube that just kind of I makes me I don't think I've happy. ever seen it. It's wonderful. I will watch oh, it. And, but you don't, you don't break in the moments that you're in I do not break very it. easily ever. Everybody else is breaking. I'm wondering if you being so good at not breaking comes from that show that you did on Comedy Central a Dog while back. Man. Yeah, where you kind of had to work with real people. I think part of it, I just think naturally, somehow, I'm able to hold it together and then not laugh because on Dog Bites Man, Zach Galifianakis would break constantly in front of real people where he would be crying laughing and we'd have to make up excuses for why this weirdo in a mustache was crying in the corner if you to guys real people. If you haven't seen the show, it was a show that was on Comedy Central for, I think, two seasons? Two, one uh, or two no, seasons? No, it was one. one season. It was a phenomenal show. And uh, you guys played a fake news crew who went out and kind of, yeah. I don't know, harassed people. It was kind of, it was done by the same people who did Borat. And so it was sort of that idea, but was before Borat came out. So people didn't quite understand what it was when it came out. But it's me, Zach Kalfanakis, Matt Walsh from Veep, and 80 Miles, who's the head writer for Fallon now. And it was this crazy sort of ahead of its time show. But they, cr they broke all the time. They were, especially Zach, he was the worst. And you're out with real people who think you're a real news team. 
And then there's this weirdo crying, and you're like, um, yeah, no, I think his name was Alan Finger on the show. And he's just like, oh, he's going through a breakup. Like, it was just like, oh, God. It sounds like he laughs the way I laugh. Oh. So the two of us would be hideous together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Timberly, your character plays a judge on this show, or she starts a judge reality show inside this fake reality show yes. that you already exists in, yes. right? Yes. Well, I mean, fake, again, let's not, let's not jump the gun. This is uh, Fei Fei's real life. Very real, <laughs> as, as everything is that happens on The Housewives. Um, no, she does. She has her own judge show this time. She is a judge and um, a taxidermist and a foot model and a Zumba instructor. And she has um, a doggy bridal business with the lowest doggy divorce rate in all of Orlando. So now she's decided to take everything up a notch since she's going to Las Vegas. So now I have a judge show called You're Guilty, Bitch, where... <laughs> I am the judge and the prosecutor. Um, and then I have a book out this season called Fifty Shades of Fei Fei, How to Throw Shade Like a Pro. So I'm just taking it up a notch. Oh, That's no, all. We, we, like all the characters this year have a book. Yeah, we all like have a book. Some kind of thing they're trying to sell. We all have sell. a book to promote. Yeah, my book is called Osteoporo, yes. Um, and it's about losing weight by losing your bone density, which is super healthy. <laughs> Do any of them have fights with their ghostwriters or anything throughout the season? I imagine, I've always wanted to see the meeting between the uh, actual Real Housewife and their ghostwriter. I fight with goes. my ghostwriters. I yeah. do. I do. Once you see what they did to my book, you'll understand why. Well, I won't reveal it, but I did use um, what I, uh, Fei Fei says she uses um, gay guys because they know how to do these things. Um, she has a fashion line and she also hires gay guys to design it because gay guys know how to do these things in her mind. Um, and so uh, I do have, my book does come out. It's not great. And, um, <laughs> and we have issues. You have some, you have have some, some words. Yeah. You're also in the in the first episode. I love this. Your your new boyfriend um, yes. is played by La, La Monica you, Garrett. His yeah, name you is have Adonis this you have this show. great line that's like he was arrested for grand larceny, but that's okay with me because you know I love things grand. Yes, <laughs> I love everything grand, and I love another thing where she says um, they're saying that he's robbing her. He he does rob her. And he, he is. He he's, steals. Yeah. He steals from everyone. Actually, he, he steals from everybody. Yeah, yeah. He like, he's yeah. just a thief, but he's, he's a thief. really good looking, and that's why we keep him. And so she has one line at one point where someone says, like, he's robbing you. And she says, um, I don't believe it unless I see it with my own eyes. And your eyes are not my eyes. So I don't believe it. <laughs> That's the logic. That's but then there is a moment where in her, like, right in front of her, he is basically robbing her. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm so happy about it. I pass him the checkbook. Yeah, yeah he's really good looking. I no. cannot emphasize it enough. But he says things like, I'm going to produce a Rolls Royce for you today, baby. Because <laughs> I'm your producer. You're like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> I think we have some time for questions from the audience. Do we have some questions around here from anybody in the audience? Right up, right up here in the front. There's a microphone coming, running over to you. What do you enjoy about the most about this comedy? What do we enjoy the most about this comedy? I think for me it was um, getting a chance to work with such a great group of women. This show is written by women, um, created by them, uh, and produced, produced starring. and starred. And um, a lot of times um, in the comedy world, uh, my experience has been the men, there's probably like five guys and then one or two girl roles, you know? And a lot of times we're the wife of like the crazy dad and things like that. And, and to be in a room with such great, smart, funny women, and we're all getting to be really big characters. We're not just the foil off the guy's role was really awesome. Do you ever talk about that on set? Does it, does it ever come out that like it just feels good to be around working with women? All the time. Yeah. We yeah. talk about it all the time. Yeah. yeah, all the time. And the men on this show are fabulous. They're great. And so funny, but they're the supporting cast. Yeah. And that's, that's new for me. At least and it's kind of new for them. Like, it's funny. They get a little intimidated when they walk on the set. Really? Like, yeah. you, have a, you have a key from Key and Peele there. Yeah. Well, well, he, he didn't get intimidated. intimidated. Oh, no, are you <laughs> yeah. kidding? He's like, Keegan's fine. That guy. Yeah. Um, but other people will come on, and, you know, it's like all these ladies, da 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 and their boobs are out, and we're spray tan, and we're ah! And, you know... And they'll be like, I couldn't, I didn't know if I could get a word, you know, a, a thing, and a, ah, you got, and it's very funny, because it's really not often that they're they are that not used to it. Yeah. They are not used to it. I remember in a scene once, Matt was doing that, his Mickey Mouse thing. Oh, Matt and, Besser? Yes, yeah. and then, and somebody, I can't remember, one of the girls 
started talking in the middle. And he literally was like, <laughs> like it was shocked the shit out of him. It was hilarious. Yeah. Do we have time for, we have more questions right here? Yes, my question is for Angela. And I was just wondering what your favorite memory from working on The Office was. Oh my God, that's so hard. That's so hard. That was like, I mean, that show is like the joy of my life, you know? I'm so thankful for it. Um, honestly, like as far as, the people are my favorite thing. They, like, became my real friends and my family. But, like, a favorite moment for me would be probably one of my favorites is um, Kelly Kapoor had tried to kiss Dwight at the first Christmas party, Yankee Swap. And I think Michael Scott had ruined my perfect party. And my character ends up out in the snow, and we had it snowing, and there were cameras on a crane. It was a, for, for our show, that, this was a big a big shot. We had a crane, we had snow. They gave me a bunch of ornaments and our director, Charles McDougall, just said, just go nuts. Just be a woman unhinged. And I just started throwing ornaments and shrieking and stomping on them because my party was ruined. I was just like, ah! <laughs> and it was, and it's snowing. And that was like, I was like, yeah, this is a really fun day at work. This is pretty cool. I'll always remember that. Oh, hey. Um, using one word, how would you describe the hot wives of Las Vegas? One word. Cheap. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Um. Busted. <laughs> sexy. Yeah. Cheap, busted, and sexy. Hello. Hello. That pretty much covers it. All right. Uh, tacky. I think tacky is a good one for tacky for them as well. Oh, yeah. Well, tacky will be up. Yeah. Tacky's yeah. up there. <laughs> All right, this question is from Andrea Savage. Step Brothers is like the funniest movie ever made. How did you keep it together during the scenes where you were the ther therapist with Will Ferrell? With Will Ferrell? You know what, I feel like I get that question all the time. I'm just someone who kind of doesn't break you until no after they sell cut. Um, I don't find Will Ferrell funny. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, um, honestly, I would just get so into the, because it was always, in, we did all that improvised. It wasn't scripted. And so, um, Basically, you know, you just have to get so into your point of view when you're improvising, sometimes in your character, and it just was like, just getting in that, <sighs> okay, I'm professional, this person's really pushing my buttons, but um, he needs a lot of help, so clearly you're not in love with me, uh, that's in your mind, and he would just go up and somehow I could just stay in that mentality of, okay, we're just going to get through this because I'm being paid. Like, it was just, it was just, I don't know. Like, I don't have a problem breaking somehow, even with Will, who was, and then when they yell cut, then I'm like, ah! yeah. Like a maniac. <laughs> it's easier for me not to break if I'm actively in the scene. Yeah. But if I'm yeah. someone who's kind of watching the scene, yeah. that's when I really lose yeah. it. And those reunion uh, episodes to me for Hot Wives are so funny because I'm watching everyone have their moment, and I'm, I kind of, lose that I'm actually supposed to be acting and I become audience and then I'm just like, ah, that's funny. <laughs> so that, for me, like if I'm in it though, yeah. I can focus and be like, okay, you can't laugh. And also I didn't know, because it wasn't fully scripted, it was improvised. So it was like, you had to be like going, what am I going to say next? You're like, I got to keep this going. You don't have yeah. time to be like reflecting on what you're doing. You just got to keep, yeah. keep in it. Next question. I don't know, right there. That guy. <laughs> that so, guy. This guy. So talking about like improvisation and stuff, do you guys get to like fool around like that all the time on set? Do you like really take it high as well? Do you really go all out? Yeah, it, it is yeah. scripted, but we are allowed, I mean, we improvise a ton. And it's kind of a mix because there's seven women on there this year. Some are more comfortable with improv than others. The script is fully there. And so if you're one of the more improv -y people, they're like, do what you want to do because that'll probably be funnier than what we wrote. And then it's always funny if you just do what they wrote too. But there's a ton of improv on it. Yeah. And I think sometimes you, you understand that a scene is supposed to motivate the story and there's some parts of the scene you can't mess with because it's going to set up future things. And, and then you know there's moments where it can be a free-for-all. And, and that's when we, I love it. I, we get to have so much fun. And but the writers are so oh. open to it. But conversely, like, I didn't come to it as a, an improv person at 
all. I, to me, I think that is the most terrifying thing in the world for people to just, when literally in the first season, when people would come over to me, I would be thinking to myself, just say the lines. Do not say something else. Do not say something else to me. Do not improv. Do not do it. And as soon as they would say something, I'd be like, <laughs> I mean, I was so scared because some of the people on our show are like the best improv people in the world. And I come from like a really strict East Coast, you know, acting background. Nobody, you don't improv make up any words you don't make up anything you know what i mean you do what's there and i was i was terrified but then by the by the end because everybody's so silly and because there was lights the nights were so late sometimes i would just get punch drunk and be able to do it but i was terrified the but first year i i also think though this group of people because the the people that do improvise are really strong at it and i think that if you're a good improviser, one of the things you want to do is take care of the person you're in the scene with and set them up, you know? And That's and like so, over half of what improv is, yeah. is actually yeah. not doing, not, doing not focusing on what you're yourself, doing, but setting you know? up the other person. Yeah, and serving the scene. And so I feel like because we had that, we have a lot of um, strong improv moments. Well, if you're improvising, right? I mean, just going back to what you guys were just saying about setting up the other person, if you're not working on setting up the other person, you're usually stopping the scene kind of dead, right? Yeah. 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 Or you steamroll, or you're just like, trying to get a cheap laugh in that doesn't really move anything forward. Right. And a lot of, I've noticed uh, not being an improv person, sometimes you watch, um, because I think it feels good to them, sometimes it can get really self-indulgent and almost turn into a stand-up act where you feel like you're by yourself. Like, yeah. they're going to do what they're going to do no matter or what. what they've got it they're gonna do it and you just sort of hold on for the ride with some people do we have more questions i don't know if we do i yeah, think we're good take it back Brady. guys thank you so much for being here Thanks i think we can wrap it up us. there it's been amazing talking to you i hope you get to go back to this horrible <laughs> hotel in vegas for the next season like, uh, i don't know if they'll have us back no. i don't think they well will. also if there's another season we wouldn't be from las vegas that's right it'll be really? a whole new city has because there been we talk about where the new city is vegas? I, um, she's been, a great one i've been pushing the hot wives of the amalfi coast because <laughs> i think and i go we might be the hot wives of the amalfi coast we're still gonna be fucking shooting in palmdale yeah. so yeah. Enjoy. I just yeah. need one day in Italy, you guys. <laughs> yeah. One day. One day. And that yeah. is all we get. Yeah. <laughs> guys, thank you so much. The show premieres uh, Tuesday next week, right? August on 18th. Hulu. There'll be two shows that week and then one every, one week, every after week after that on Hulu. And as I said, it is some of the funniest women around, some of the funniest people around. You should definitely tune in and watch it. It's incredible. Guys, thanks so much for being thank here. You. Great thank talking you. Thanks, guys.